greetings and arrows. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's peace and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let us be known to you and listen to what I have said. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104, found on your red title insert. We will recite the psalm alternating by half verse, alternating with the aspects. O Lord, how manifold are your works. Second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? And if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we, not, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with signs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the love of God.
disciples. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say to thee, I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. as the birthday of the church, 
a baptism by fire, if you will, in which something completely new is being born. The reality of Pentecost is a bit different. Early Christians who were still steeped in Judaism would have heard the story of Pentecost that we read in the book of Acts today with two interrelated things going on in the backs of their minds. First, the word Pentecost would have had deep resonance for them. In Judaism, Pentecost names the Spring Harvest Festival, which occurs 50 days after the Passover. The first fruits of the Spring Harvest would have been brought to the temple in Jerusalem and offered on the altar. Related to this, for Jews, the story of God giving the law to Moses is also tied to the Jewish festival of Pentecost. As you recall, Moses ascends Mount Sinai and God gives Moses the law. Jesus, as a Jews, as I said, tie this feast of agricultural Pentecost to the giving of the law. And they see the giving of the law as a feast as well. A great day in which God gave them something that still guides their lives today, some 5,000 years later. So Christian Pentecost, what we celebrate, rests on these two traditions. Members of the early church did not create Pentecost. They experienced the joy of God's Spirit just as their forebears experienced the joy of the gift of God's law. The content may have been different, but God gives both the law and the Spirit as gifts that ultimately tie us and our fellow, our co-religionists and Jews, that tie each tradition to that tradition. And in that tradition, God gives each religion a tremendous freedom, as well as incredible stability. Now, as Christians, we often seek what we believe to be the certainty of tradition. But we often get lost because we often mistake it for then the way that things have always been, or custom. Tradition is much larger than mine. And in this way, we often lose our connection to what scholar Houston Smith calls the great tradition, capital G, capital T. He says it is the voice of peace, justice, and beauty that emanates from the Christian soul. I would go further and say that it is the voice of peace, justice, and beauty that emanates from the human soul. Regardless of how we define it, this great tradition is important to us, and the seeds of it lie in the ground of the ancient church, and the fire of the Pentecost moment in Jerusalem all those years ago or here can bring the light and growth those seeds again. Let me tell you about one place that has done that. Since 1956, that is for 56 years, the Cathedral of St. Mark in Seattle, Washington has been saying the service of Compton. 500 people gather every Saturday night at 9.30 for this experience. Now, Compliment is a very old service growing out of the Jewish practice of prayer at fixed times. And during the long reign of monasticism, let's say from 800 to about 1500, beautiful music was composed to allow the monks to chant the service. Compliment is known informally as the bedtime prayer of the church. It's the last thing that monks and nuns say before they go into the great silence. It's the, the bedtime prayer of the church, and at St. Mark's in Seattle, they say it at 9.30 on Sunday nights. Western Christianity really had lost that service, for the most part, from about 1500 on, until it was rediscovered by the Episcopal Church in the mid-20th century and inserted into our daily common prayer. So it's enjoying a renaissance. It's a fire week, if you want. And in Seattle, at that service at 9.30 on Sunday nights, when I'm getting ready to go to bed, there are 500 people in the cathedral who are mostly teenagers and 20-somethings who come to this service to hear the men's choir chant the most ancient texts of the church. There are no big screens. There are no praise bands. There is no theater-style seating. 
and there is no Starbucks. <laughs> None of the hallmarks of the megachurch, the modern megachurch. In fact, there is, most people who go do not even go and sit in the pews. They go and lie on the floor of the cathedral and look up at its massive ceiling. Or they wander the aisles, not wander really, but they stride meditatively up and down the aisles as they listen to these men chant these ancient texts. 500 people, mostly in their 20s. And in this, these men and women find simplicity and beauty and peace in the great tradition which feeds their souls. Peter Steinke, who's a church consultant now in his 60s, tells about going to the cathedral perhaps in the last five years to experience this service of compliment. So he goes into church, and he actually does sit in the pew next to a young woman who has orange streaks in her hair and is kind of pierced all over. <laughs> you know the type. And the service begins, and he begins to participate, but he's not familiar enough with the service to pick up the cues of what's supposed to happen. So at one point, the woman next to him sort of elbows him and says, you need to stand because we're reciting the Apostles' Creed. So he stands up and recites the Apostles' Creed. The woman who is standing next to him is silent as she looks out into the cathedral, which is dim with candles sort of flickering on the walls. So she is silent as they recite the creed. And after the service is over, Steinke asks her, do you come to this service often? And she says, I come as often as I can. And pausing, she goes on to say, I don't care about religion, but I come because I am looking for something more in my life. Something more in my life. Steinke goes on to say, I'm sure that she would not call that something the holy or mystery or transcendence. But these words point to her long life. Unless you think this woman is an anomaly, let me read you part of a couple of reviews for Compliment that appeared on the website Yelp. You may know it. It's one of the internet review sites. I tend to use it to find restaurants because it's very good for that. But you can find Compliment as well. I discovered it. Who knew? So one of these 20-somethings posted this review in February of this year. And she begins, no words can convey what that service freely gives. And like somebody else on Yelp said, I am not a Christian or Buddhist or an inherent adherent of any earthly doctrine. In this singularly beautiful service, there is room for all. Even with all the intolerance, oppression, and bitterly cruel judgments that I personally associate with Christianity, at Compline, I'm allowed to come dressed as I please, believing whatever mishmash of things I do, and still find and share in the peace. Still find and share in the peace. Recall Houston Smith's words about the great tradition. It is the voice of peace, justice, and beauty that emanates, as I would say, from the human soul. That's one review. Let me just share briefly another one. This time by a man who says, I went to the service first in 1996, quite reluctantly, I might add, and quickly fell in love with it. It's simple, really. You walk in, find a seat, or lie on the floor if there are no seats left. The choir files in, they sing a cappella. You get chills down your spine because the music is incredible. Maybe you weep. There's no sermon, no harassment about tithing, no secret agenda about hell if you aren't Christian. And he finishes his review with this line, St. Mark's is awesome. The service of Compline at the Seattle Cathedral is fiery, newly sprung out of the seeds of what is ancient. But as the second reviewer makes clear, the service is also about food, nourishment or refreshment for hungry, young souls. 
to long for something more or something real, something that we would name as God. And fireweed is not growing only in the crunchy Pacific Northwest of Seattle, home of Starbucks and Microsoft. If I had time, I could tell you stories of fireweed growing at the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer across the river in Cincinnati. My wish is to be able to tell stories of fireweed growing here, on this side of the river, here at Trinity Episcopal Church. Today, we are going to plant those seeds in Hayden, in uh, Walter, and in Addison. They were planted in us at our baptism. May we allow the water and fire of the Holy Spirit to let them grow in us here and now. Amen. If you will please rise as you're able, we'll continue in your hymnal with hymn number 299. Hymn 299. Thank you. 
present Addison Lee to receive the sacrament of baptism. Continuing at the top of page 302. Parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, God's self. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. These questions are also directed to the parents and godparents. Do you renounce faith in all the spiritual forces? the baptism of 
and John, and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin and everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, by it we share his resurrection, through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever.
need in your Book of Common Prayer on page 308. Let us now welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the house of the Lord. We bless you today in the Christ of his blood, for the reign of his resurrection, and share with us the eternal priesthood. We have more symbols of your baptism to give to the, uh, the children. Well, James, here's your first Bible, along with your baptismal certificate and prayers for the Godparents to say. Same for Canaan. And for Madison. And now, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ be always with you.
Robert and Bob, Bob and Donna Deal and Linda Tabley and Brenda Israel, Jim Swearingen, all helped a number of weeks ago. We also will be doing some more work this coming Saturday morning around 9 o'clock. And as Robert and I would say, if you can do this, we need your help all <laughs> I'm Lou Clements, and Peggy Lesmar asked me to tell you that if you have not yet brought your United Bank offering envelopes, you may bring them next week. I think she told me that the blue boxes will be at the usher station. Thank you.
I said, this is just the start of a period of exploration, reflection, and dialogue. Thank you. Karen.
before God. Amen. May God who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples. Burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of your presence. Amen. May God who by the Holy Spirit cause those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you.